Hello, lovely people. It's such a blessing to be with you again today. I hope everyone is keeping well and staying safe by God's grace. If you are new here, welcome and thank you for joining me. My name is Samira. So as we do it here on my channel, there are two sessions. First, I talk briefly on how we can improve on our Christian living. And then the second is the cooking session where I share with you easy and delicious recipes. I do this because the Bible says in Matthew chapter 4 verse 4 that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. But if you are just here for the cooking, then sit down here or here for when it starts. Otherwise, let's crack on with the first session. In the past weeks, we've been talking about growing up spiritually and the topic was babyhood. We learned from the Bible that there is a striking similarity between spiritual development and physical development. We learned that there are at least three stages in spiritual development, which correspond to three stages in physical development, being babyhood, childhood, and manhood. We dealt with babyhood in the previous weeks. I will link them in the description box below. In the coming weeks, we'll be talking about childhood. We will learn that the characteristics of the childhood stage of spiritual development are similar to that of physical. Our key scripture for the entire childhood topic will be Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. I will read it. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 14. That we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting. Amen. Paul, in this scripture, is referring to spiritual children here. He wrote this letter to the church of Ephesus. And Acts chapter 19 verse 7 tells us about 12 men. But I'm sure there were more. So when Paul said that we should no longer be children, he was talking about that we should no longer be spiritual children, but we should grow up spiritually. We will be looking at the three main characteristics of childhood. They are unsteadiness curiosity and talkative. I'll start with unsteadiness and curiosity today. I have a nine-year-old and one thing I have noticed about him is that when you ask him to sweep the floor, you go and get a brush and the dustpan and then go on and sit on the carpet. He starts to sweep all right but for say five seconds. If you don't pay attention to him, by the time you realize he's playing, for some reason something always distracts him. A chore that will take him about 5 minutes to do will take 30 minutes, if no more. He is unsteady. You just can't depend on him. You always have to be on him. As has been said many times, you can't put a grown head on a child. Not possible. The same thing is true spiritually. You can't rely on spiritual children for anything. You call for prayer meeting, Bible study, anything spiritual. They have excuse upon excuse not to attend. And just as children in the natural, spiritual children are unsteady, unreliable, impressionable, spasmodic. You can't rely on them. Let's now go on to curiosity. Children are full of curiosity. You know, every time I come home with their groceries, once I set their bag down, my children always want to know what I've brought home. Sometimes I even tell them what I'm going to buy but they still go into the bag to see what's in there. They are full of curiosity. Some of these spiritual children that have never really grown up spiritually, though they've had time and opportunity, as sure as they catch a little bit of gossip going, they want to know who, who, who. They are full of curiosity. Curiosity is a characteristic of a child. If you tell a child not to look in the closet, he's going to get into it as sure as the world. Curious. Spiritual children are the same way. They are always poking their noses in other people's business. But the word of God teaches us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 11, to mind our own business. God doesn't want you poking your nose into other people's business. So let's learn to be quiet and turn to our own business. 
Amen. Next time, we'll go on to discuss the last characteristic of childhood, which is talkative. May the peace of God that passes all understanding be with us all as we strive to attain an excellent Christian life. Amen. If you are watching and not a born again, I want you to know that the Bible says it is appointed unto man to die once and after that judgment. And 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 10 says, For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each of us may receive the things done in the body according to what he has done, whether good or bad. So heaven or hell depends entirely on you. So if you are listening and you want to give your life to Jesus, I want you to say this prayer with me. God is saving your life today. Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I believe that you died on the cross and rose again to save the lost. Please forgive me now of all my sins. Be my savior, my Lord, and my friend. Change my life. Make it new. Lord, help me to live every day for you. Thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have prayed this prayer with me and you think you need guidance on what to do next, send me an email. My email address is in the description box below. Thank you all for taking time to listen. God bless and keep you. Now, join me and let's go do this cooking thing. Hello, 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 lovely people. Welcome back to the cooking session. So today, um, we are going to be making some garden eggs, egg stew. Yeah, garden eggs, egg stew. I'll tell you about it as we go along. So let's start with the ingredients. So as you can see, we have tomatoes, we have pepper. I have my spice cube as well. I'm doing using this instead of my garlic and um, ginger i'm just being lazy i can't grind yeah and i have my kobe and grilled salmon yeah i also have um some onion i'm using shallot here my eggs are here my palm oil and my momone too for flavor my garden eggs too are ready i've cut all of them up all of them up and they have added water so it's going to go onto the fire and cook it until it's nice and soft yeah so halfway the halfway through the cooking and um, we go back and we add our tomatoes and we add our pepper so this is for the pepper to be soft so that it's easier to grind in the asanka and the tomatoes so that's easier to take off the skin so that is the main reason why i'm putting this in and also I, i'm adding my kobe here my salted fish just to make it a bit tender so that it's easier to eat sometimes when you put it straight into the stew um, it doesn't um, really, you know, cook the way you want it. So I just cook it a little bit before also this way get some of the salt out so that it, your food does not become too salty. Your fish is not too salty. So once um, it is nice and soft, you get them off the stove and it's now ready to grind. So we are going to be making this in this earthenware thingy. Oh, I think that's how we call it. Earthenware something, bowl or something or ayua or asanka or apotoyua we call it asanka okay pimps we call it asanka yeah so i'm grinding it and um, for it to be very nice and smooth as smooth as i can get it yeah and as you can see here you see that's easy for me to peel off the skin yeah you can put in the skin you can leave it in but i just want a smoother eating experience you see so <laughs> so yeah i've taken it off so you're going to grind all this so the reason we're going to make be making this in the um apotoyua is because when you cook in apo, uh, this apotoyua or asanka because of what it's made of you know it gives you this nice aroma flavor some this um i don't know what it's called is it nuttiness this charcoal i don't know i don't know some char grilled flavor it makes it delicious very delicious so that's why we are, we are cooking it directly in the um, the asanka. So as you can see, I've grinded my um, garden eggs and I've added my spice cube, you know, to make it taste nicer, yeah, and um, some salt to taste. So um, we are going to put this on fire and cook it through. Then we'll continue from there. But this food, 
one afternoon we were just um at home we we're so hungry my mom called us to come and eat we went i'm like yeah ma daddy then my mom was like hey this is called garden eggs eggs stews can i ask you added that you've added eggs we'll say and in Torwa for your medium because she has some fra. Hey, the problem, baby. Hey, I ate it. I ate. I ate. That. It was so nice. Yeah. So I decided to replicate it today. So, as my garden eggs mixture is cooking on the other um, burner, I'm also melting my palm oil mm. and I'm frying my momonis, the soft salted fish here, yeah? and I've added my onions to give it more flavor. So the oil is going to be much more flavorful. Yeah, so I'm going to fry my Kobe as well so that the flavor from the Kobe will go into the oil. Then when the oil goes into the stew, you know, all the flavors will be, you know, dancing together and everything is going to be, oh, sumptuous. It's just delicious. Yeah. So, yeah, as you can see, I'm, I'll be pouring it. I'm just frying it and I'll be pouring it into the garden X mixture. Um, it, I didn't fry this for long. I fried it for a maximum of two minutes and I took it out yeah so as you can see it's all cooking nicely yeah everything is already cooked so it's already ready but it's just we need to cook it in the asanka to get that flavor from the asanka yeah so i'm going to put in my eggs but before i do that i need to add my oil otherwise the eggs will stick in the asanka you see because there's no oil to help it maneuver its way around the stew yeah so that's why i've added the oil now so my eggs um, are ready i'm going to beat it a little bit just to break up the yolk that is the reason why to break up the yolk otherwise you have pots of yolk around it's fine if you like it that way but i want to break it up a bit then pour it in so once you pour it in what you have to do is to leave it to simmer for a bit for about two minutes before you stir but i have a tendency of stirring i don't know why i like stirring i just like to stir yeah <laughs> so i started stirring but then if you don't stir it you see those uh, bits of eggs that are you know white bits it'll be more in your stew that's how i think it's supposed to look yeah so once it cooks down a bit then you pour in your the rest of your oil and then your kobe goes in so that you cook your stew a little bit with the kobe so that you know all the flavor will marry beautifully and then you know there'll be ah uh, hmm. yeah so i'm adding my my grilled mackerel here i think it should have gone in earlier but you know there we have something that we call it mix mix or potogum shuegum however or whenever it goes in sometimes it makes the food even nicer so let's leave it as it is yeah so our stew as you can see it looks ready nice and delicious and it's ready yeah so you can eat this with cocoa yam with the yam with plantain with um ripe plantain Charlie, apimbi person so now corner yeah so please try it and hope you love you like this video. Bye.